Hey team, it is uh, Luke here. Um, I am delighted to be here at the Medea Hospital in Sydney uh, with Scott Hanson, uh, Energy and Sustainability and Business Partner at the Medea Hospital and of course Energy Director of 3A Group, Robin Archibald. Thanks for being with me. Pleasure. And thanks also for the, for the site tour that we've just been on. It's a really exciting project that uh, the Pete Hospital and the, and the New South Wales State Government, of course, the local health district that they're working with three year group on. And one of the things I'm trying to do more and more with these videos is actually get out and about and, and, and profile really interesting and exciting projects that our members are working on just to give a sense of what's possible. But uh, we always start, I guess, with the motivation of an organisation for going on this journey. But so from a, a New South Wales Government perspective, from the Pete Hospital's perspective, why are these sorts of energy efficiency, uh, renewables, decarbonisation projects, so forth. I think we realised that we were a large energy consumer yep. and a large waster of energy uh, and other things as well and uh, had a significant impact on the environment around us and it's a very beautiful but a very tricky climate too with um, uh, bushfires, pollution, heat waves, etc. So uh, it was very important for us to follow government policy but also reduce our impact for an organisation that claims to do no more harm. Yeah. We want to make sure that we are doing that as best as we can. Oh, that's a trick, isn't it? You've got, you know, at the state government level, you know, with these ambitious targets, the decarbonisation, there's, I think there's a, you know, support for the community, you know, whether it's households or businesses to go on that journey, but it's important that the state government's lead by that example. But then the, it flows through in really different ways in different parts of state government. You know, huge, sprawling organisation that, you know, hospital is one of the more energy intensive parts of the state government. Also, critical pieces of infrastructure, as we've been talking about as we've been going through, like core business um, is not necessarily managing energy, it's core business is kind of keeping people alive, but, uh, getting people healthy. Um, and so uh, what, what, what's it been like for you as kind of a contact point with, with Robin and his team in kind of telling the story about why this is important as well as people uh, you know, get on the picture? It's opened my eyes, uh, I'm not a clinical person in background and so to do a project of this nature in a live environment uh, that's 24-7 yeah. trying to save people's lives has been very tricky and very intricate um, but as a team I think we've worked really well to be able to do that. Yeah. It's been a very collaborative approach with our local staff, yeah. our maintenance staff, our engineering staff but then also with the clinical staff and the executive of the offices as well, um, to be able to talk them through a disruption to their yeah. service and the shutdown of their service. And uh, we've had some very good advice from our contractors and their subcontractors as well yep. to help us run through that process. It is a confidence building thing, I think you said before, that uh, as we do little projects, along the way and they are successful and we can see the improved data and, yep. and reduced energy from those projects that's build confidence to keep going with the rest of the project and even more projects beyond that so that, that relationship has built along the way yep. um, step by step yep. and it's very good right. right all right well let's talk about the actual project well what's the what's the scope of works you've been working through here in the yeah so the scope of works at this, at this campus been over 12,000 flights installed and it's a lot of uh, you know, operating uh, environment, different operating environments to, to navigate and specialist like in the design and so forth to suit the purpose that we've installed half a megawatt of solar, some of what you can see behind us there uh, and then we're now looking at some of the mechanical solutions around water replacements and domestic water plant efficiency improvements and uh, we've also we're almost about to um, undertake a significant submetering uh, installation, which will give us more than 200 points of data, yep. uh, and that will feed into an analytics overlay, which will also pull information from the, the site's quality management systems, of which there's more than one. So, being able to bring all that data together will give a lot more visibility uh, for future opportunities as well. And so, I mean, one of the great things about being on site, you say, well, a lighting upgrade. You know, the many would say, well, that's table stakes these days. Like, why is that exciting? But what, what we're able to have a look at with some of the, 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 the uh, bespoke fittings that have been designed, given that this is, you know, 
dec uh, buildings that sometimes are decades old. So they've got particular sort of characteristics in terms of the roofing. And um, you know, 3E and, and the PN have actually said, okay, well, we can kind of completely reconstruct the, the roofing, um, we can or the ceiling, um, or we can or we can actually design those bespoke LEDs using the local manufacturer and make it a lot more seamless. Um, and so there is complexity when you're dealing with these existing buildings. Like that. There is, and there's been quite a lot of scenarios with with headlights and yep. different dimming systems and navigating the operating things in the circular. And uh, but the lighting has has really changed the atmosphere right? in terms of the amenity of the spaces. It's made a huge difference. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we were, we were just talking about, wasn't it? It's like you know, uh, it's lighting is actually a um, a really tangible way that you know the people that work are being taken care of in the hospital can kind of see see the difference and the, the improvement. Uh, the amenity and productivity and, and health and well-being in terms of the upgrade right? That's absolutely correct. Um, we'd say now that we put the new lights in, um, that we're getting up to standard. Yep. Uh, whereas before, we were, we were struggling a little bit to maintain those light levels, <laughs> shall we say. Now, you were able to walk me through a corridor where you know some of the old lighting was, was yet to be replaced and then we were walking through the corridor with the new light, light, lighting. It was, it was like uh, coming out of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Robin, you mentioned the, the, the metering and sub metering, which I was very excited about because this is kind of, you talk about it being a, a trust building exercise. It's also like just making sure you've got the right data in order to build a business case for some of those bigger upgrades in terms of mechanical plant and, and equipment. Lots of gas used on this side, and, and broadly we, we understand that you know, we're moving away from gas, you know, electrified where possible. You know, a hospital is one of the, particularly a big hospital like the hospital, one of the, the more uh, challenging sites to electrify, um, particularly in commercial building space. And what are you hoping in terms of insights that that data will give you to be able to kind of advise Scott and the broader the being talking about what's possible? Yeah, well, there's been quite limited visibility. It's a big campus, you know, 900 plus beds and so forth, and then expanding to you know, adding new buildings. So it's been, yeah, very minimal visibility about where the energy is going, where the gas is being used. Yep. Uh, so having a comprehensive metering system in place, coupled with data from the BMS yep. systems, uh, will just give us that visibility to be able to hone in where's the next opportunity and quantify the savings much more accurately, which will really support the business case uh, for further investment and uh, degasification and all of those sorts of things. So the sub metering includes um, a dozen or so gas meters as well. Yep. There is a lot of different points of gas usage and again, yeah, very limited visibility. So it makes it, um, challenging to understand, you know, the capacities needed and um, what the business case might look like. So really set the site up for future you know, initiatives. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it's just, just really helpful both in terms of understanding and planning those future projects, but also just managing the site day to day. Because yeah. you were talking earlier about you get the spike in the gas from the particularly gas and you don't have that sort of granular understanding of the size that you're using the gas, right? Absolutely. And the advantage with electric using electricity using the equipment is you can interrogate it a little bit and yeah. find out exactly yeah. where that is going. Gas is something different than yeah. oils and burns yeah. and oils and burns and you have no idea where it goes. And I also look after the bills and pay the bills. So yep. I see the, the increases in gas. We had uh, a 300% increase in gas costs. 300%. That's very That's difficult. the focus the mind's got. The focus <laughs> is the mind. Like a blue flame. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess just just to close, you were talking to me a little a little while ago about you know the role that this project's playing in sort of uh, kind of demonstrating what's possible, you know, both in the local health district and beyond. You just want to speak to me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I, I guess it was a challenge taking on such a large project over yeah. five major sites yeah. uh, and very spread out, but it has helped us to achieve every mandatory requirement on our government resource efficiency policy. Yeah. It has helped us to achieve our sustainability policy targets, yeah. aspirational targets, as well as mandatory targets, and it has been a uh, an enveloping project for the sustainability plan and our, our, our forecasts into the future. Uh, it's set us up really well when we have all of our data from the building analytics coming into us. Yep. We will know exactly what we need to do and where we need to go for it. Right. Scott. Robin, it's been a delight. Um, it's been exciting actually being out here and you know, take me through the, the, the newly lit corridors, um, the shiny new plant rooms. It's all looking fabulous and really excited to see uh, what's next from the Bear Hospital.
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.